Hello my lovelies, I hope you're all well. So today is International Women's Day and I thought that I would sit down with you and just have a little chat about my personal experience of being a female in the military and some things that I observed over my 12 years of service. up a cup of tea so grab yourselves a cuppa because it's just going to be a sit down chat type video. For those of you who are not aware I am a veteran of the Royal Air Force here in the UK. I served 12 years, uh, joined up at 18 and left at the age of 30. Um, had some great times and had some not so great times and I just wanted to sort of go through some of my observations as a female in the military and some of the pros and cons. So starting off with basic training, obviously um, females are held to a less standard than their male counterparts. So in terms of physical fitness, we have to get less than the guys, which, you know, it's understandable in a sense because um, women generally are less physically capable than men, so our fitness standards are lower. Um, this can possibly lead to some resentment from the male counterparts and, um, you know, in terms of fairness, you know, if it was a perfect world then everyone would have to do exactly the same in order to pass. Um, but that's not the case with females and males in the military. In terms of uniform, your um, combat uniform and equipment is designed for the male body. Um, so it doesn't necessarily fit us particularly well. It's different in your day-to-day -day uniform, like for us in the Air Force, that would be our blues, we call it. Um, and women generally will wear skirts or trousers that have been designed for female bodies so it's a bit different but with your combat gear it is designed for a male body so things don't fit particularly well uh, and when you look at things like body armor um obviously they're not taking breasts into account when they design body armor so it's not going to fit you as well as it fits the men in terms of grooming standards, um, when I was in, we have the dress regulations. I believe they've been updated since then. But when I was in, um, females with long hair had to wear their hair up in a bun and you couldn't have any loose hair at all. And um, this was difficult for me because I have like the little flyaway hairs that like to just come out and um, I also like to wear my hair down. I hate wearing my hair up. I don't think I've got the right face for it. So um, having to wear my hair in a bun was a bit of a pain, but you know, regulations are regulations for a reason. Um, men generally just had to have short back and sides, tidy sideburns, and um, their hair just had to be tidy really. And they also had to be clean shaven and this was for um, to make sure that your gas mask fit correctly. Um, that's now gone. Men in the RAF are allowed to grow beards now, whereas it always used to be a Navy thing to grow beards. But they have opened it up now. Um, my husband still shaves though every day. <laughs> he just prefers it that way. In terms of makeup and nails, uh, the nails thing didn't really affect me. I am not a manicure type girl. Um, I'm not particularly a girly girl anyway, but I do like wearing makeup. I feel like it makes me look better. Um, you have to go for a natural makeup look. You can't go overboard. I had one of my female corporals tell me that I was wearing too much makeup at one point um, because I had eyeliner on. And um, if you want to dye your hair, it can only be a natural colour. Obviously, they don't want people running around with bright pink hair. Um, nails have to be um, short and 
uh, if you're going to wear a nail polish it has to be a natural colour again no bright nails in, in the military in terms of jewellery you can wear your wedding and engagement rings and um, plain stud earrings there is still a lot of people who are very surprised to see women in the military as well so if a woman goes out and about wearing her squadron t-shirt or something like that people might assume that she's wearing her boyfriend or husband's t-shirt and get a bit shocked when they realize it's actually her that's in the military i know a lot of people have told me in the past that i didn't look like i should be in the military i think like there's this assumption sometimes that all women in the military are butch and have you know short hair there is also an assumption that all women in the military are lesbians um which is not true obviously you do get lesbians in the military um but uh, most of the girls i met um were straight actually and on the subject of um sexuality and stuff like that um because of the ratio of men to women in the military, um, women do get a lot of male attention. I experienced this myself and it can make you get a rather overinflated opinion of yourself if you're not careful. Um, you can feel much more attractive than you actually are because you're getting so much male attention. There is also quite a competitive thing between females in the military and it's probably similar in the civilian world as well um, but some females who outrank others may treat their subordinate females rather badly because of this competitive feeling or maybe a bit of jealousy something like that um, who knows who knows but it is um, it is somewhat normal for women to to be competitive with each other and it can lead to not very nice atmospheres I once had a female colleague tell me that the only reason that this particular pilot was friendly to me was because I was pretty um, and this this all sprung it was just a conversation we were having about which pilots were friendly to us um because we were on a uh, working on a squadron at the time I, I worked in flight operations so i worked alongside the pilots and also in the air traffic control um, but at this point in time i was working on a squadron so i was assisting pilots and um, this one particular pilot that we were talking about never really spoke to her, to my colleague, um, but he was always very friendly with me. And her reasoning was that he only spoke to me because I was pretty. So there you go. I heard stories of um, sexual harassment and that kind of thing. Um, I never experienced it firsthand and I never saw anything like that in my 12 years but I do think that sometimes people have different levels of um, banter that they are willing to put up with. Um, I've never been a particularly politically correct person so you know jokes and a bit of banter never really bothers me um, whereas some other girls might take things the wrong way or their just level of acceptance is a lot lower. So, and this has been a more recent thing, you know, as, as the Western world has become more woke, uh, their tolerance to, to things that we would consider normal um, is a lot less. So unfortunately, you have to really watch what you say around people these days. But on the whole, I am incredibly proud to have served my country. Um, otherwise, I wouldn't have stayed in for 12 years because I had some bad times, trust me. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm incredibly proud of my service. And I think it's a great thing that we have um, both men and women in the military. 
Um, I don't think women belong on the front line personally, and you know, there are numerous reasons for this. Um, number one for me being men's natural, natural inclination to protect women. Um, and also there's the hygiene side of things because us women have um, different needs in terms of hygiene and I don't think being on the front line lends itself to that very well. But if you are a female in the military or you have been in the military or you're thinking of joining the military, uh, then let me know and I look forward to seeing all your comments and I will see you very soon.